Hey guys, it's Jennifer from 319 Farm and Outdoors. Back here with Emma. She's going to share with us um, some stuff going on with her rabbits. And I figured I'd show some little cuteness here. Say hi. Say hi. Hello. <laughs> There's a pretty smile. So we're gonna talk with you about her rabbits and what she's doing with her rabbits. And I will let her take it over here in just a second. So for those of you who don't know, my daughter Emma is trying to grow her meat rabbit business. She decided that she wanted to try and raise rabbits for meat. And we've done so successfully, but on a very small, small scale. So um, like we said before, we took a break from doing anything farm related for a period of time while, um, while this one was taking up some of our time. And we decided that everything really would go on hold because it kind of takes, yes, she can run it, um, but she's still learning. So she needs her parents to kind of help her along the way. So. We have a broody goose. I'm not going to make her feel uncomfortable, but she's gone broody. I wonder if it's a different word for geese than it is for chickens. Maybe. I don't know. I would think it'd be the same though, right? Probably. So, Emma, tell us about what you got here. This is a brand new purchase. Mm -hmm. um, we were going to film it, but we just didn't have the time to do it at the time when she picked it up. So... So um, the other day we came across an ad and uh, for two hutches or for one hutch for sale, and I immediately jumped on the prospect. Or let me let me start over. My dad immediately jumped on the prospect of getting a new hutch set up. We used to have this hutch. We would use this hutch for for everything. I had three does and a buck in it, and I was very successful with that. But we wanted something that was a little more spread out and something that was easier to access because this one i have to stoop down to get into it the cages are really hard to reach into because they're not at my like chest level so we looked for something that was a little taller and a little more spread out uh, lengthwise so we could have this like kind of corridor between and we wanted more cages so i will still be using that one as a grow as grow out pens um for future use. Hopefully I will be doing grow out pens on the ground so that they'll have access to fresh grass. Um, I originally started them out in this hutch. I put them in this hutch to begin with, um, but since the weather is still cold, um, I, met, I went ahead and moved them. I went ahead and moved them to the more enclosed pen because I do have two rabbits with, um, with litters and the other ones are pregnant or we have just bred them. They're technically not pregnant until I palpate and make sure that they're pregnant. So uh, I will introduce you to my rabbits because I have recently acquired a couple new ones. We did get, re get um, we released our book that was named Midnight that actually one of our viewers named. Uh, we released him and decided to bring in. Now that the geese are thoroughly quiet evening snack won't hurt him. <laughs> we got rid of our old buck, Midnight. He had gotten old and we were noticing that he was producing litters that would die. So his litters would, we didn't know if he would pass on some sort of cancerous disease to them or um, it was maybe it was something that I was doing, but all the litters that he would produce, over half of them died. So we decided to bring in some new young jeans i got a well-proportioned buck and he's a different color than midnight was but we went ahead and released midnight on our land this is the new buck his name is rocco i don't really like his name but um we could change that if you guys have a suggestion for a name for my buck i'll look through the comments and just comment <laughs> comment a name if you want to and who knows maybe you could name my new buck the new buck that I got is a kind of, let me open this up so you get a better view of him. He's a kind of sandy color. He has this pretty orange behind his ears. 
I don't pay attention to colors, but um, as I have gotten more into the rabbit business, I tend to sell the prettier rabbits first. So the broken ones, the tan ones, and he's very friendly. He is a little escape artist though, because when I first got him, I had him in the barn in a temporary pen and he tore up the floor and escaped in the barn every single morning. And I had to chase him around the barn. He would just stay in the barn. So I would chase him around the barn trying to catch him. And he just loved to be free. So he was out every morning. This one is my next, this is a doe. This is my next doe. She is actually this uh, rabbit's daughter. Let's see if you can see her a little better. She's a dark brown color. She's a very heavily built doe. And the last litter she had, she had eight kits. It's a, a good large size litter, especially um, comparing the litters that, comparing her litters to the litters that her mom has. Her mom typically has between five and six kits per litter. Kits are baby bunnies, by the way. But she tends to produce, um, she had eight kits the last litter she had. And that was her first litter. I was shocked at the amount of kits that she had for her first litter. She had a great first litter. So this rabbit is named Penny. The next rabbit we have, um, her name is Mama Medi, after my dad's grandmother, I believe. Yes. Yeah. This is the biggest rabbit I have here on the farm. She weighs a whopping 11 pounds. That's very big, even for New Zealand. So she's got a sweeter disposition as I've had her uh, longer. She's become more sweet, but she has a litter. She had five kits and I think they are a couple weeks old. They'll be six weeks, March 27th. So you can't eat my fingers. Yeah, this one's trying to nurse. Yeah. Let me see if I can't grab one. <laughs> Is that funny? So her babies are, um, the only reason I've kept her, I, I was originally gonna call her because she doesn't go above five babies. She's always had very small litters, but the only reason I haven't called her is because her babies grow super fast. These babies, you'll see the, the next litter I'll show you, they're tiny, but these babies grow super fast. They're only a couple weeks old and they're already humongous. So her babies have always grown fast and they um, tend to grow a lot more after um, their six months. So if I want to keep any for breeders, they are very big breeders and they produce very large offspring. So you can have your baby back now. I think your babies are hungry. The next rabbits I have are my newest addition to my herd flock. What do you, what do you call a bunch of rabbits? Warren, my Warren, that's what it's called, is a Warren. Okay, the next two rabbits I have are the newest addition to my Warren. No, they will not escape. There is a hole in the cage, but they won't escape. Um, I acquired these rabbits from a person that um, had no need of them anymore. He didn't really want them anymore. So I was like, I'll take the, the rabbits. They are a New Zealand, I believe. Um, they might be mini Rex. The tan one might be a mini Rex, but I'm not completely sure. If you guys know the difference, then you can go ahead and comment and I can take a look at that because I'm not totally sure what breed these rabbits are, but I'm pretty sure they're New Zealand. So I have um, here, I have L'Oreal and the little tan one in the back is Maybelline. These two rabbits were, they're about three years old and they were bred for the first time. We'll see if they conceive, but they were bred for the first time um, two days ago. The first time in three years, they had never been bred before and they both took to the buck immediately, which is a really good sign. The last rabbit I have in my warren is Jemima. She is a feisty little doe. She's the smallest doe I have and she produces the largest litters. Now, she is on the small side when it comes to New Zealand's, um, but I'll show you, uh, Remember, if you remember, I showed you Mama Medi's litter earlier. Now those babies are very large and they grow very fast. And that's the only reason I haven't called her. But if you look at these tiny little babies, they're very, very little compared to uh, Mama Medi's litter. 
So these rabbits are all the same age. These ones are actually a day older than those ones. So it's quite surprising to see the difference between this tiny little doe that produces such large litters and my other large doe that produces small litters but big kits in each litter. So I'm not gonna deal with her anymore because like I said earlier, she's a feisty little doe. She likes to scratch people. So besides doing rabbits for meat, um, during this time of year, which spring, spring is upon us and Easter is right around the corner. I timed my breeding this year so that all the babies would be weaned by Easter. A lot of people go crazy over rabbits during Easter time. So I timed the breeding this year so that I would have lots of little kits to sell. Instead of raising them to 12 weeks at processing age, I'm going to raise them to eight weeks and sell them as babies or I'll sell them as pets or breeders for people interested in raising their own meat rabbits. So that's it for the rabbits today, guys. I have an interesting project that I started a couple days ago. Um, I'll just, uh, we'll just jump right into it and show you. Every person I've gone to online has said that these, that this project won't come about. Like it won't succeed. But so far we have had great success with it. So I'll show you guys and I'll clear up any misconceptions about this project that we have going on. We can't really hold off the mystery any longer. So we'll just go show you. What do you think, Ruthie? Huh? What do you think? Were you happy? I heard you clapping. You were back here clapping. You are sissy. Okay, so right now we are standing in our laundry room and Emma decided that she wanted to take some of our duck eggs and she has decided to use the incubator that we were given. She did her research on how to balance the humidity and the temperature so that she could hatch out some duck eggs. So I'll let her talk about that. Every place that I went to online told me that duck eggs were extremely hard to incubate. Now, I don't know if it's just me or if it's just the our environment and maybe where we live, but we've had great success so far. And watch me say that in the ducks not hatch, but they have been very timely in their development. It, in fact, I think they're a little ahead of schedule. I'm not supposed to candle until day seven for um, that spider that people tell you about. You're not supposed to see that until about day seven to day 10. I started seeing that three days ago and that was like day four. So either these eggs started, started incubating, started incubating before I brought them in from outside, which I highly doubt because they were that day's eggs. So I don't think that they started incubating before. I think they're just, really, uh, they're just a really good batch of eggs. That or I have pretty good drakes out there. My ducks are a crossbreed. I have um, a couple purebred khaki Campbell and ducks that I bought most recently were half khaki Campbell, half mallard. So I've heard that when you crossbreed, the ducklings tend to be a little hardier. So, or the ducks in general tend to be a little hardier. They outlast winters more uh, efficiently. So I'm gonna give you an example. Um, I'm gonna pull out one of the eggs. I'm only gonna do one because I have been pulling out them out pretty frequently and I don't wanna disturb them too much. Um, I read that humidity percentage has to be a little bit higher. Temperature is still the same for duck eggs and they go seven days longer than chicken eggs do. So instead of hatching on day 21, these eggs will hatch on day 28. I did originally have a couple chicken eggs in here. I wanted to test out whether you could incubate chicken and duck eggs together, but the temperature dropped too low and the chicken eggs actually rotted. So I had to throw out the three chicken eggs that were in there. I have five duck eggs in here right now. All are developing great. And every online source that I went to said that even if you drop just one degree, you could lose your whole batch of eggs. I have dropped a couple degrees and I've gone up a couple degrees on here. The humidity has dropped down. Everything has gone, gone wrong according to all these articles, all these websites. But my eggs have survived. My little ducklings are survivors. So um, hopefully at the end of this month, we'll just do a little like recap and we'll show you these little beautiful ducklings. They will be three, three quarters khaki Campbell, one quarter mallard. So now I'm gonna candle one of the eggs and I'm gonna show you. Yeah. So this is the, the spider, quote unquote spider, that everybody always talks about. So if you, I'm not sure you can see, but we can see 
this small spot up top is the heart and you can see it pulsing as it's beating and let me put this down and then you can so it'll stay steady so this little pulsing a uh, dark spot up top is actually the heartbeat of the embryo and this is the spider that everyone always talks about that dark spot in the middle and the vein spidering all around also you uh, tend to have this vein that circles the entire um, progress of the chick so this is the whole yolk and then this is just the center where that fertile spot was that's where the embryo started developing Now, one thing I do um, suggest, I tend to go a little crazy with candling because I am a, um, how, do you, how do we put this, a fiercely protective mama when it comes to my eggs and my chicks. I have fallen in love with all, all kinds of poultry and I just can't stand it when other people touch or stuff like that. So I like to make sure that they're developing properly um, you don't want to touch them too much because it can disturb the development and I am going to from now on skip um, every other day I'll candle or I'll do it once or twice a week um, instead of doing it every day because I don't want to disturb development now that I know all of them are growing properly I don't want to disturb any development that's already occurred so um, one thing that I did learn is that on day 10 you start spraying duck eggs you give them a little bit more of that moisture. The humidity stays the same in there, but you take a little spray bottle, fill it with warm water, take each egg out and you spray it. Another good thing that I learned to practice when you're doing duck eggs is when you spray them, you take them out, spray them, let them get down to room temperature, and then you put them back in. Now this is supposed to so-called mimic um, when the mother duck gets up or the mother goose gets up. Uh, starting at day 10 they do start getting up they go take, take a drink of water take a little break and then they go back and sit on their eggs during that time the eggs tend to come down to room temperature so I learned that it's a good practice I might do I might I'm probably not gonna do it with this batch because I want to see how they do just solely in the incubator without coming down to room temperature but I will spray the eggs because I've learned that that extra humidity is just what they need or that extra moisture is just what they need All right, guys, so let me get in here. Yes, it's a, it's a death trap in here. <laughs> <laughs> you didn't hear that. <laughs> um, all right, guys, so that is it for today. Thank you so much for hanging out with us this evening and um, listening to us talk about the rabbits or listening to Emma talk about the rabbits and the little duckling eggs that we are hopefully going to hatch out. Um, it's nice to have ducks on your homestead because if you like to bake, those are the kind of eggs you want to use. They are much richer and apparently that's what the French do. So Ooh, fancy. Ooh la la. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways. <laughs> um, so thank you guys so much for hanging out with us. We will catch you guys on the next video. See you later. For those of you... Five and six litters, or five and six litters. Instead of raising them to 12 weeks. <laughs> 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 <laughs>